everybody it's Jim from Sprague Wood Turning. This week we're going to combine two cherry crotches along with some awesome tinted resin from Designer Epoxy to make a really unique hull form. So what you're looking at here is two uh, well, it's actually from the same tree, but this is cherry, cherry crotch, as you can see. And uh, we've done a hollow form where we're combining these two crotches together with walnut and with spalted elm, but we haven't done cherry. And there's some really nice figurative green in this crotch area here. So I figured that it was time to take and make this. Uh, these have been once they were cut and split in half like this they were put into my drying shed for a year and a half and they've been in my kiln now for probably three months something like that i just tested them with the moisture meter and they are ready to be used so what we're going to do first is round these and this is the bucket that i'm going to use and the thing is with buckets they have a taper on them so i have a couple of this is one for my ice cream bucket, but they're different sizes. So this is the size for the very bottom of that bucket. And then a little ways up, this one will fit better so that we don't use uh, so much resin. Anyway, that's the goal. So yeah, I mean, these, uh, these hollow forms really look cool when they're done. And what we're gonna do is put them in a casting bucket like so, orientate them, and uh, I think it's going to be cool. I don't know exactly what color resin we're going to go with yet, but I'll figure that out after we get these ready for casting. First things first, let's get these rounded on the bandsaw. So this is the third type of hollow form that we've done with these crotch pieces. Uh, this is my circle cutting jig and if you are curious and you want to make one similar to this i did actually shoot a video on it so uh please check that out uh, it works really really good and i'm very happy that i made this because it has made my life a lot easier before we uh carry on with the project i thought i'd show you this uh this is bird's eye maple and that was in my firewood pile. Two big pieces of it. Another one down below here. But uh, very, very strong burl eyes in it too. Or should take bird's eyes in it. Yeah, we all throw these in the kiln and uh, we'll make some of them with these in the future. Hard maple, that's where you usually see bird's eye maple. Of course, before we do any resin casting, we need to get rid of all of that bark. I also took a brass brush and cleaned away all the material that you see that the, uh, the screwdriver didn't get rid of just to make sure that everything was good prior to casting. Let's mix up some resin. This week we're going to be using deep casting epoxy from Designer Epoxy since this is a really deep pour. And just like last week, I figured that magenta would go really nice with this cherry. So that's why I decided to use magenta again. I know we used it last week, but I think it's going to look cool here. All right, you're not going to be able to see a whole lot. This is a liter and a half of deep cast with magenta. And I don't know. I'm assuming this is going to be enough. But what I want to do is throw this in the vacuum chamber for a little bit because there's a lot of fine little cracks in this and I want to make sure that those all get filled in. So, you know, I'm just going to throw it in the vacuum chamber for about 30 minutes or so and then we'll, uh, I'm sure the resin level will drop and I'll be able to top it up. So let's get out the vacuum chamber. Here we go. Uh, you know, again, it never ceases to amaze me how much air comes out of these pieces. Cherry is, I wouldn't really call cherry a porous wood by any stretch of the imagination, but for some reason it really did seem to eat up a lot of the resin that I put into this piece. The 
add a little bit more. Actually, I might as well just add it all. Anyway, I'll keep doing this for probably about another half hour and I'll bring you back in when I'm done. That's been about 20 minutes, but the uh, the level's dropping off, so I've mixed up another three quarters of a liter here. Just to make sure all the wood is submerged when we're doing this. Yeah, must throw it all in there, I guess. Still can't pull a full vacuum on it. Uh, it overflows with bubbles. Do it another 10 or 15 minutes and hopefully we'll be able to pull a full vacuum on it by then. All right, so I just took the vacuum off. Uh, still can't pull a full vacuum. This has been probably 45 minutes. If the bucket was deeper, it probably wouldn't be an issue, but I mean, you got to work with what you got. I don't want that rock to be sitting right down there because maybe we'll be able to incorporate some of this resin into the very top of the vase if, if it's there. Uh, I did have an overflow. I don't know if the camera's seen that. <laughs> anyway, it just got to watch it like a hawk or else it's going to bubble over and then you got a big mess. All right, well, this is going to go into my pressure pot for three days, and then we will see you when it's all done. Ugh, I hate cleaning messes. Yep. All right, see you in three days. So before we carry on with the video, I thought I would just show some stuff that people have sent me. Uh, first off is Warren. Actually, I've had this for pretty much a year now. And this is Myrtle Pieces. And, uh, you know, I can't get that here. It typically doesn't grow in this area. So he was kind enough to send this to me. Uh, some of these pieces, like this one, are really big. I mean, that's a really nice block of wood. I don't know what to do with this smaller stuff. Uh, I don't know, maybe just cut it up in smaller pieces and cast it. Anyway, thanks, Warren, for sending that. I know this is long overdue. Uh, next up is from Kelly, and she sent me these sweet gum pods. Uh, these are going to be really cool when they're cast. Bring these out the light a little better. Uh, I mean, just a really strange looking thing. Certainly uh, can't get anything like that here. So thanks a lot, Kelly, for sending this along. Kelly Lamont, Lamont Wood Turning. She, uh, she's got a Facebook site. If I can think about it, I will link it down in the description. Uh, these come from Craig. And Craig was so kind to actually send along this bottle stock or bottle, bottle opener. Very cool. Along with the bottle stopper. And these are Doug fur, Douglas fur cones. So again, very interesting kind of little hairs on the end, stuff that we don't uh, typically see a lot of here. Next up is from James. This is abalone shell. Look at that shine and shimmer. Mother of pearl is awesome. So that'll be a really cool natural inlay. Uh, a bunch of pieces here. Looks like maybe it fell apart and they glued it back together or attempted to. Uh, geez, you know, they're a big critter, aren't they? <laughs> uh, thanks a lot, James. That's really cool. We will certainly see these in a, in a video. Uh, certainly an inlay in the room will be really nice with this stuff. Okay, what else do we got? These are from Mark. And these are sugar pine cones. I mean, huge, wow. That is so cool. A couple of them here. Got to figure out what we're going to do with these. And, you know, again, if you guys see this stuff and you have any ideas as to what I should maybe do with it, feel free to leave it in the comments down below. 
Last is from Richard. Some more large pine cones. Just absolutely massive pine cones. So thanks a lot, everybody, for sending that stuff along. Uh, this is really cool. It's really awesome to get some really neat things in the mail from uh, my subscribers and people that follow me here on YouTube. I really do appreciate it. All right, let's get back to the video. So it is four days later, and I was very surprised when I took the lid off the pressure pot and seeing that all of our resin had disappeared. Now, this isn't going to be so bad as long as that resin level didn't drop off past the opening. But I guess we'll find out once we get it out of the bucket here and see what we're looking at. Well, well, well. What happened here? Sitting down there. Well, that's no good. Both sides. There, too. can't believe that that, uh, that that wasn't enough resin in there. I've done this long enough now. I mean, even with the, the vacuum chamber, like I'm just, I'm really surprised that it dropped off that far. Okay, well, <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to have to give it some thought and I'll get back to you. Not a good start to the day, folks. Not a good start. All right, so here's what I'm going to do. Uh, the more I look at this here, the more I hate it. So, you know, <laughs> I, I mentioned when things kind of speak to you. By this not going correctly, this speaks to me that I should get rid of this. So what we're going to do is just pinch this between centers, and I'm going to grind back this lip edge maybe dip it down do this kind of number on these openings that you see here not on the wood just on the resin side mind you we don't have a big area to do it in there and um, I'm gonna pour some gold we'll just pour some um, some art cast gold this will do a couple of things for us I don't know if you can really see that but there's still cracks that haven't been sealed up in this crotch green here all along here uh, this here will now be filled in with gold and I'll make sure that I go in far enough that it'll be deleted and that will tie in with this and it'll maybe look like it was always supposed to be there that's the goal <laughs> so anyway let's just get this pinch between centers I'll find a rough center where this is going to be and we'll get that done I figured that it would be easier to drill it out. That's a half inch drill bit that I'm using. Uh, if you're going to use this method, make sure you're careful in what direction you go because these knots typically don't go in straight. Once I had the, the hole drilled out, that's a Typhoon bit. And again, you know, you can get uh, the links to this stuff in the description down below if you're curious. This one did come from Lee Valley though. And they're very aggressive, so you got to be also careful that you're not too aggressive with it as well, or else you could damage uh, the piece you're working on. Once that was done, then I decided, okay, we're gonna, just going to try and grind this back and, I don't know, put little dips in it uh, to essentially mask that there's been a second pour. So that's the whole idea of me doing this, so that there's not essentially a witness line. That's another... Uh, bit that comes to a real sharp point and I just decided to use that right down in the very end just to make sure that it's it's not like a, a rounded dip at the very end of, of the piece if you follow it. Once the carving was completed then I just used a little flap sander just to give the resin a bit of a tooth for the new resin to bond to.
basically the goal here is to just get rid of any straight lines and just give um, give it the appearance that it was supposed to be there. So now that we're short on time, uh, we're going to be using Artcast. And of course, I'll be able to work on this the next day. So that's the great thing about Artcast. And also for color separation, it's really awesome that in that regard too. I decided to use pure gold and I'm happy with this decision. I really like the pure gold and it's a good contrast with the magenta. All right, this should do it. Uh, <laughs> Guess you never really know. It will certainly fill in those holes that are there. Right there, she's filling up the cavity. All right, well, I'm sure that that will find its way down there, or it better. No need to put a weight on this. This is plenty heavy as it is. Um, I don't know. We'll see. See you tomorrow. Into the pressure pot it goes. All right, it's so next day. Let's see what we got. Didn't want that anyway. I don't know why this doesn't want to come out. It's off the bottom. Are you kidding me? <laughs> oh. Well, all right, we're just going to have to figure out how to deal with that. You know, I, I thought about sticking a screwdriver down in here to make sure that that was going to flow down in there, but I'm like, ah, it's, it's going to go. <laughs> uh, anyway, we already got one center. The only good thing out of this is maybe we'll have a gold collar at the top of this thing. I can't believe that. So if you're keeping score at home, that's resin 2 gym 0. I just, it blew me away when I pulled that out of the out of the bucket and it hadn't filled there's um some people are going to think that maybe the resin cured too fast basically i mixed that resin and poured it so the the volume was dispersed over the top of that so it wouldn't have overheated and cured too quickly uh again it's probably driving a screwdriver down there so that the resin would flow into that area probably would have been the best thing to do and you know that was easily achieved by just marking marking it on the top as to where the openings were and then do it so you know now I'm, now i'm i'm behind schedule and and um i've still got to come up with a creative solution to try and save this piece so just in the process of clearing away any excess resin we are using the hercules here from hunter tool systems and I'm cutting in a tenon in the bottom of this piece, if you're curious what I'm doing here. Now, this is very similar in the looks to some of the other hollow forms that I've done involving these crotch pieces. And mainly the reason for that, the star of this show is, should be these, these crotch pieces. So in order to really showcase them, you need essentially a flat top on the very top of this vessel to you know really showcase it and so you know there's probably going to be some people 
it, and my wife is in that category too, that she goes, well, this is very similar to what you made before. And, and I said, yeah, you know, it, the reason for that is to showcase the, the crotch crane. And if I basically make a rounded piece, probably most of the crotch grain is going to disappear on this. And, and that's not really what I want to have uh, when I'm doing these pieces. So the goal right now is just to trim away all the excess resin, get that tenon cut so that we can get this mounted in the jaws of the chuck. Uh, that way it's certainly more secure that way. And then uh, we'll be able to basically carry on and shape this piece as to what what I envision it being with some more hiccups along the way. I would also like to thank those who stopped by to watch the 90,000 subscriber giveaway project last week. A nice, really nice covered dish and I will link that at the end of this video if you happen to miss it. YouTube is doing the um, not notifying people again for whatever reason. So, uh, really cool dish and uh, really, really fun project to do um, with some <laughs> hiccups along the way as well. So, uh, I don't know, it's just uh, lately it's, it's, um, it's been challenging. And, you know, you, when you think that you've got something licked and, you know, like I don't pretend to be a master resin turner by any stretch of the imagination since I haven't really been at it very long. But, you know, I've got enough experience under my belt now that things shouldn't go wrong when they have gone wrong. So, um, you know, it's I guess it's just rolling with the punches again, right? Since we have this uh, these two voids that we have to deal with again, now, you know, I'm just trying to clean off the excess resin and then stand back and try and come up with a creative solution to uh, fix those two voids. Uh, you know, it just goes to show you that some weeks you're the hammer and some weeks you're the anvil. <laughs> and I, I was certainly anvil this week. So there, now I'm looking at this going, now how am I going to fix this? And do I have the time to fix it so I don't miss my Friday upload? Uh, anyway, it just, uh, yeah. On a positive note, at least the Hercules is hogging wood off like it's the boss. So that that's good. At least one thing went my way this uh this this week I figured that I got to get rid of some of this resin on the top to really make a full educated call on what I want to do here so at this point I just want to flatten it and then we can stand back and have a look at it and see if you know see what we can do to fix our errors well I'm kind of at a loss as to what I want to do here um, that one's almost deleted. That one's probably a good solid half inch or more deep, so that's a problem. I thought about maybe making ribs on this. That's an option where it would go down deep enough in there to get rid of that and delete it. I guess they'd have to be more like this. I debated doing the tulip shape. That certainly is right now probably my number one, but um, you know, we just did one of those recently, but as far as keeping this resin on the very top is concerned, that's an issue because it's not nice and flat. So I don't know, it's probably, we're probably not gonna be able to use it. Anyway, I need to think on it and uh, I'll be back. So after some thought, here's what I'm going to do. I am going to go with a tulip shape 
Uh, the difference between the vase and this is, of course, uh, my intention is still to make this a hollow form. Uh, we're going to have to be really careful of this. I don't want to get into this knot here. So I'm going to thin this out a little bit more. One of the reasons why I went with this smaller uh, jaw set is so that we can get a smaller base and thin this out and to this, this kind of form like this. I don't know. There's just, we're probably going to end up losing pretty much all of this. <laughs> uh, but, you know, I, I just don't really, I've rolled it around in my head a few times here, what can be done. And I think that's probably the best thing to do to make it aesthetically pleasing. Share your thoughts. So you, you probably know what I'm going to do because you've seen the thumbnail. <laughs> so at this point I was saying, okay, I'm just going to whittle this down. And then once I get it down to the level that I, that I need to have it, then I'll either taper that up to the top and, you know, taper it out down to the bottom as well. But then I get thinking that I'm just going to lose so much of the size of this piece by doing it that way. And leaving that cove in there didn't look good to me either. So, you know, uh, again, it's just kind of design off the cuff. If I had to do it all over again, what I would have done was taken just a little bit of magenta and put it on top of that gold after, you know, maybe putting some dips into the gold. And then that way it would have been magenta, gold, and then magenta on top of it, which you know, thinking about it now, probably would have been the right call. But uh, it never came to mind when I was working on this piece. And I was still of the mindset that I was really trying to uh, get the project done. And I was worried about missing the upload. That was the other thing. So the unevenness of the top uh, where the gold is sitting, it was very obvious that I had to get rid of it because it just would have looked odd in the final piece. So that's why there's no gold in the, uh, the finished piece. For the first time in a very long time, I'm really stuck on this. I don't really know what direction to take this in. In a way, I kind of wish I hadn't cut away this, this cove area here where the bead is on the very top the corner. <sighs> in order to delete this, I had to go in quite a ways. So we've got quite a groove here. Uh, I actually thought about wrapping this in wire to make it feel like it's pinched off and then cast it in clear resin. And that's not completely off the table yet, but um, kind of don't have the time. <laughs> don't know, need to give some more thought. I'm gonna actually make this groove a little bigger. I'm gonna square it off like this and we're gonna do another resin pour. And we're gonna use uh, the magenta again with the gold and I'll pour from each side. I, I just, you know, I, I cannot, cannot figure out what to do here that's gonna look good. So anyway, gotta do that and then we'll uh, cast this for the third time. I think that something like barbed wire wrapped around this two or three times as tight as you could may have looked really cool. If I had have thought about that before cutting the cove so wide, then that definitely would have been an option. But, you know, I just don't have old barbed wire laying around. So I think the rusty stuff would probably look the best. Uh, so anyway, you know, it's, it's just, I regret kind of cutting this groove, but in the end, it's a neat piece and I'm happy with the results. And I guess really that's all that matters. 
All right, so what I got here is uh, you can buy this to lay on your shelves. We got it at Costco, and I just cut a sheet of it off here. Anyway, I'm just going to glue it around, and um, we'll have to pour from this direction. When I bought the stuff, I never intended on ever using it for casting. Uh, but anyway, I, I needed something to go all the way around this. And it comes in actually fairly decent sized rolls. And uh, the, only, the only drawback on it is that it's got those ribs on it. So that will be basically left behind. But if you're trimming it away, it really doesn't matter, I guess. But um, the fact that it comes in large rolls and I think they're about 18 to 20 inches in width so um, yeah if you're if you do a lot of this stuff it may be worthwhile getting all right I've mixed up some pure gold and some magenta rinse the bubbles off get this poured now the knot is on this side I've got a couple sticks in here to prop this open we are at, what are we at here? 55 degrees, yeah, we gotta get going here. See any leaks? Okay, I gotta get this in the push pot. See you guys tomorrow. See, I just had to sit on a bowl. This looks like it was successful. I was glad to see th something going my way for a change. <laughs> so anyway, let's get this off and uh, get it trimmed up here and see what we're looking at. Oh man, I guess I spoke too soon. That's all right, we'll be able to trim that back. You ever get the impression that something doesn't want to get made? I've I've encountered this over the years where you know you're working on a project and it's telling you that I don't want to be made. That's it. So there was a little indent there, but nothing really all that concerning to deal with. Uh, and you know if, if you're if you're a turner and you've turned for a while. You probably know exactly what I was saying there that uh, every now and then you just get something that just fights you and fights you and fights you and, and you, you stand back and you look at it and go like do you want to be something or am I going to put you out of your misery and throw you in the wood stove and be done with you but of course when you've got all this time and money invested in something then you know it's it's best to forge on and, and get it done. The only thing that I would change for the third pour was that I would pour it in different locations instead of just pouring from each side. In a way, I'm glad that the magenta covered the knot hole where the gold was. In a way, I probably would have been better if it was, you know, covered with the gold. So, you know, that's probably the other thing that I would change. But other than that, the third pour was successful, <laughs> finally. And then we'll be able to um, move on to hollowing on this, this um, challenging piece. There, uh, I don't know, I'm all right with this. Uh, Tried to mix the resin the same. Might be a little off. I don't mind the band going around here. Something that we haven't done before. I don't know. Tulip shape. Maybe we'll call it the tulip holoform. All right, let's clean off the face and get ready for hollowing. For the record, I would not, I would have a difficult time putting that band in there if it wasn't running true like it is now in the lathe. If, if that was off a little bit, then, you know, 
when it when it's on the lathe and it's spinning it's very noticeable but when it's sitting on somebody's table then it's probably not going to be as noticeable at all or, or if noticeable so yeah just looking at that resin you had the uh the magenta underneath of the gold and it wasn't it wasn't even so at that point i just like yeah okay i gotta get rid of this because it just does not look good Got the steady rest in place because I figured that would be the next thing that was going to happen. That this piece was going to go flying across the shop. So to prevent that, I ran the wheels kind of down in that little OG tulip area. And then that way it would be virtually impossible for it to actually come flying off the lathe. But you know, I just, at this point I was like, okay, what else is going to go wrong here? Something else has got to happen because <laughs> nothing has gone my way. And, uh, but you know. That's just the way it goes some days. If you're curious, I started with a three quarter inch bit and then I went up to an inch and a half. And that is a tailstock extender that you see because uh, the travel on my um, tailstock wasn't long enough to reach the bottom of this piece. We are all set up and ready for hollowing. Got my steady rest in place. This is the one-way captive system. There's a laser if you haven't been here before. Uh, this is my preferred method for hollowing because I'm left-handed and it's hard for me to work on the inboard side of the lathe. So this is a good system for you lefties out there. Anyway, uh, I got the teardrop cutter in. Won't need the laser for a little while. And uh, let's just clear out some space inside of this. And then eventually we'll have to switch out to a larger boring bar, but or sorry, a smaller, boring bar curve one but for now we use the big one so finally on to hollowing and I really like to use this big thick boring bar for as long as I can there's literally no flex in it even when you're working far off of the tool rest so I like to use this as long as I can and what I'll do is I'll open up some, some size, some area inside of the hollow form for shavings to sit so that you don't have to turn the lathe off as much to clean out the shavings. And then I'll turn the teardrop cutter so it's basically straight along the shaft. Go down and do the very bottom of the vase on the inside. And then from there, turn the teardrop cutter to the left slightly and then just work my way, you know, basically from the top further down. And eventually, you know, you'll see I'll, I'll end up switching out to two other boring bars to get the job done. And that's just mainly because of the geometry of this vase and how it's got this flat top. Uh, but anyway, there's not a ton of footage here, so um, we'll be able to move on to sanding and get our first coat of finish on here fairly soon. Here I've switched over to the double bent bar and the difference between this bar and the other bar that's called the bent bar, this one here, the cutter is more in line with the shaft back where my hand is sitting when, when it's being used there. Where the bent bar, of course, is more at a right angle and that way you can do the very top corner of a the inside of a hollow form such as this one. I didn't really show it all that well, but that is the bent bar. So now we're more at a right angle. And I do find of the three, this one tends to vibrate the most. And it's just, I think, because it's it's the cutter is typically way to the left. So you're going to get some vibration, especially if you're quite a ways off of the tool rest. Up near the tool rest, it's not too bad. But the further you go with this tool, 
typically the more vibration you'll get. I should have mentioned that the cutter is adjustable on the very end of the boring bar as well. So you're able to do the very top part of the vase, like you see it turn there. And then, you know, as I work my way out to the very outer edge of this, I'll turn the cutter more to a right angle and that will get the job done. Smooth cuts, that's the key. Uh, long, flowing, smooth cuts. My laser died. Uh, this is another problem that I've found with this uh, this hollowing system is the fact that the lasers tend to fail on them. This is my third laser now and I know that I've got I got an email from somebody sorry I can't remember your name uh, basically saying the same thing and you know I, I really like this system but the uh, the lasers seem to be an issue. I, I don't know if it's the fact that they can't take the vibration that the rig produces uh, either way, I mean, I, I'll see if I can find a replacement and if I can get a replacement that's really good, then I will share it with you. But if you've encountered this problem and have now solved it, please in the comments let us know where you got the laser from because I would love to know. Just doing the last little measurement here to make sure that everything is good to go. Then I thought I'd see how translucent the resin is and I'm pretty happy even though it's not polished out it looks good. I want to give the top a little bit more of a domed feel so that's what I'm doing now. Before I remove this steady rest and um, you know I, I sand with the steady rest in place because I typically don't do the outside until the inside is done. So just trimming, doing a final little bit of trimming with the Phoenix and the Hercules here. And then we'll be able to uh, get a look at the inside of this and then uh, proceed to sanding. All right, I'm going to try and show you the, uh, the inside of this piece, but the opening's pretty small. So I don't know if the camera's going to be able to pick anything up in there. Things are cut actually pretty clean. I'm very happy with it. All right, let's uh, move on with some sanding. Everybody's favorite. Finally on to sanding. I started sanding the inside of this at 60 grit and I ended up going to 320 because we plan on doing a resin finish on the inside of this. And uh, that shaft extender I got at Princess Auto here in Canada. Uh, you can get them basically at any place that, that sells uh, wood turning supplies. You'll find them at most of those places. Had to put a glove on because it was starting to get hot. And I just did, I had a hard time reaching just the very inside top of the vase or the hollow form. So I just did that by hand and it all worked out pretty good. For the inside of this piece, I want to do a resin finish, so I mixed up some more art cast here. And uh, for those of you who are curious, so when I did the band here around the, the side, there was some leftover resin, and uh, I just poured it into a container that makes these things, or not a container, a mold, quite a rather large one. So whatever I don't use this time around, I will put some sapphire blue into it and I'll throw it back in that little mold and you know I'll gather up all these pieces and then eventually we'll do something with them.
There, I'll leave that like that for about 10 minutes and then I'll flip it over, pour the resin back in the cup and then uh, mix up the color, put it in that mold. Anyway, we will see you tomorrow for just the final trimming of the outside, sanding and finish. It is the next day and I uh, had a little bit of resin spillage so clean that all up and there was just the slightest of movement in the top in the heat overnight so trim that away then I got my cone live center in place just to hold things <laughs> so that uh, again yeah and again I was really gun shy because the way this had gone I was like yeah if I don't use this something bad's gonna happen so we never really did do a final trimming on the outside of this piece so that's what I'm doing here and then once that's done, we'll be able to move on to sanding and finally get the first coat of finish on this piece. You know, as much as this thing fought me, I I do like the look of it. And I hope that you guys really like the look of it as well. The, uh, the crotch grain really is nice in this piece. Now that the outside's been trimmed, uh, we can start with sanding. These are the three and a half inch dipple discs from sandpaper.ca. I was checking the chuck to make sure that it was on tight because I typically sand in reverse when I'm standing in front of the lathe like this. So, you know, just the way, <laughs> the way things had gone, I'm like, yeah, if I don't check that, sure enough, this thing's going to come off the lathe. I should mention that this piece was actually sanded from 60 to 800 and here I'm using the Triple E buffing compound and then once we're done with that we'll clean it off with the denatured alcohol and get ready for our first coat of finish. Alright so for this piece we are going to be using Waterlux Gloss, the original. There's the can in case you want to get some. Well, this one's easier to get off than the exotic wood vase was because it's not near as heavy. Uh, that crotch grain on the top is pretty cool. There is a taper on the very top. See how it tapers off? Sorry if the lighting isn't exactly the best. You know, overall, I'm pretty happy with the resin too. Even this resin band that goes along here, uh, I really, I mean, it would have been preferred that it wasn't there, but you know, Kind of got to play the cards you're dealt. Anyway, let me know what you think. See you tomorrow for the second coat. So it is the next day, and like I do between every coat of Waterlux that I use, I do the Triple E buffing compound. You'll see me use the large buff on the outside of this piece and on the top, and then I tried my small little buff to see if it would fit into the hole, but it was too large. Then I just got some 6 0 steel wool and got it ready for the next coat of finish. Well, good morning. This is the second coat of Waterlux Gloss. I know that I never showed it, but the finish on the inside of this after the one resin coat was actually flawless. So I didn't have to do anything else with it. I just reached in as far as I could with my hands to put the water lux on the inside of the hollow form. And other than that, two coats of finish is all it needed. Well, there you go. Second coat looks pretty good. That might do it. Crotch green is awesome on the very top. If there's a third coat, I will do it the same. Otherwise, we'll see you when we're doing the bottom. We're doing the foot. I'm 
happy with the finish so on to the vacuum chuck it goes and pretty rare event where the first time I put it on and it <laughs> it's good after all of the obstacles that we've had with this one so I just turned the base with the 5 8 bowl gouge from David Ellsworth and then sanded it from 120 to 320 all right let's finish this video up hope you enjoyed it all right, let's have a last little look at this beauty. That crotch grain on the very top is the star of the show. It would have been a shame to lose that. Same thing on the very bottom. I could put, I could have done a, a recess in there, but you know, I, I don't want to do that. I mean, the whole idea of working with these crotch pieces is to actually show off the, 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 the crotch areas and I mean, that's the whole idea of me doing these. Um, the resin, I'm reasonably happy with the resin. The star of the show certainly is the, uh, the cherry, but the resin, well, it wouldn't be possible to make a piece like this without the resin. That's all there is to it. Um, I will light it from above when I do the rotating footage at the end like I usually do and let me know in the comments what you think about this piece it ended up being eight and a quarter inches across the top here and it's six and a half inches tall from the very base to the flare on the very top and there is that little flare I know that some people may think that it's not there but it is there uh, so yeah anyway let me know in the comments what you think about this week's project I don't know exactly what we're doing next week. Uh, I know that I just got to get this video done and get it uploaded. So uh, hopefully it's something cool. So please come on back next Friday, 9 a.m. Eastern. And I've been trying to do premieres. So if you got time to kill at 9 a.m. Eastern, hop onto YouTube. And when the video premieres, you can get in the live chat and we can talk about the uh, that week's project. So that would be cool. I'm gonna set this down. Anyway, let me know what you think about this week's project and of course put designer poxy down in the comments to be entered into the giveaway at 100,000 whenever we get there. And uh, by putting a comment down below, we'll also be entered into my bull draw at 95,000 and 100,000. For the 100,000, we're going to do something special. I don't know what it's going to be, but it's, it's going to be a, a big pricey turning to commemorate the fact that I got to 100,000, assuming that I get there. Um, I don't know what we're doing next week, but uh, hopefully it's something cool, so come on back for that. All right, well, that's it. Take care. Stay safe. Don't forget the bell. Please share my videos with your friends. That thumbs up certainly helps with the analytics, and I guess that's it. I'm out of here. Have a good weekend. See you next week.